<laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> it ain't nobody watching it. I go as soon as I see a set of eyeballs. I'll tell y'all why I done went live this morning. The lip still did. This some bad lipstick, ain't it? It's called Love Muffin. It's 7.29 a.m. It's 7.29 a.m. <laughs> they outside <laughs> playing this music on the loud karaoke jam box. And he's DJing at 7.30 a.m. It ain't nobody tripping. <laughs> I love my little village over here. Oh. Yeah, for those who don't know, um, who don't know me and my journey, I've I've been on this porch before. This used to be my perch a long time ago. I came from being homeless, sleeping in my car, had a Nissan Cube. I was sleeping in my car and had people holding my belongings here and there. And my uncle caught wind of it. My uncle found out I was sleeping in my car. And he called me. Tika! Girl! Somebody told me you sleeping in the car. We family. Come over here. This house right here was my refuge. And I was able to spend time with my uncle and get to know him a little better. <laughs> and really get to uh, meet my grandfather as a younger person because he, he acted just like my grandfather. But um, just being able to sit on the porch and listen to nature natural nature, hood nature, family nature. This house was here before I was born. I was a baby coming over here playing in the yard and sitting on the porch and stuff. It's peace in this house. If you notice a, a glow up, if you notice a certain burst of assertiveness of, yeah, I know who I am in this season. I'm sure of who I am. It was, you know, because, you know, when I got married and stuff, of course, I had went off to, me and my husband, you know, went off because I was married. You know. <laughs> but, you know. I can't explain the peace from sitting on this porch. Even in the midst of all this noise, you're going to always hear somebody cussing somebody out. <laughs> it's going to always be somebody randomly just walking down the street. But this little spot is anointed. I find peace in this spot right here. And it's 7.33. And baby, it's, it's jumping over there. They, they don't stop playing the music and now they arguing. So I feel like a uh, old girl on, uh, <laughs> what's that, Miss Bernita? In living color for real, because I be checking out everything. It's organic. Lord, I might be finna record a crime. I, you know what? My neck 
probably done got two inches longer for me. Y'all see her? I know I look like my daddy from the side because I just felt real nosy the way I just did. That's because, see, they can't see me, but I can see everything. That's why they be cutting up. Well, I don't think if they knew I was watching it, anything would change because they up playing the jam box on the porch at 7.30 in the morning, so feeling real emoji-ish this morning. <laughs> I I feel like I look just like that little, uh, my little character I made. I don't know how that happened, the little bags and everything. Child been having, I was born with these bags. I was born old. I was born with an old spirit, and I used to be right up under my grandma's heels by default because I couldn't go outside because, you know, uh, the, the sun burnt my skin when I went outside, so I was a grandma, baby. Child, I'm all at school trying to lay hands on people and pray for them and tell my, mm, 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 Lord, have mercy, mm, mm, telling people, settle down now, settle down, telling the kids, hell now, so, I'm talking about five, six years old, sounding like an old woman, and uh, still sound like, well, I ain't never sounded young, <laughs> I've always sounded just how I'm sounding, the same timbre, the same speed, the same everything i've always been acting old like this but looking young like this man shout out to my products out of necessity came invention because baby when i used to have lucas i wish i would have took more pictures of myself when i had the lesions and stuff and baby i i was doing a beautiful job with makeup on my face nobody knew that I had them scars all over my face you know and, and but you see this on my head I used to have scars all over my face and I created the organic soap and the lotion really for me for a selfish reason I wasn't trying to make no money. I wasn't trying to be a soap maker. I was trying to fix my skin. And basically, I had to learn chemistry without going to college. I had to teach myself. You know, because it's one thing to have a gift, to have an anointing, you know, to have to craft and make stuff and follow directions and go on YouTube and watch videos. But when you, it's inside of you, that's rare, you know, when it's just in you, when it's a natural thing to be a healer. I can't explain it, but in this day and time, you know, you still need credentials. You know, you still need to know your stuff. And I'm I'm thankful for this uh, COVID happening. Uh, I, I hate that we lost a lot of people because of it. But I'm grateful that everything stood still for me to force me to study. And study I did. I, I, you know, I was already making, you know, great um, body products, the soap, the lotion, the hair products, the whole hair line, everything with results. You know, hair grease really grow hair. Scalp oil really grow hair. And it's like the six degrees of separation that I always talk about. You know, um, I didn't even learn this until a couple of years ago where my grandmother's hair grease recipe came from because it, it was some stinky stuff that she used to just whip together. It just looked like she was just mixing some of this, some of that, squeezing juice and doing this. And then I watched the Madam C.J. Walker story. And they showed her lawyer. His name was Freeman Ransom. So, of course, when I heard that name Ransom, that's my family's last name, Ransom. And I got the dig and pulling up pictures and went to the family group on the page. Yeah, that's our kinfolk. That's something, something. That's, I was like, 
So you mean to tell me that my relative was Madam C.J. Walker's lawyer until she passed away and her best friend and whatever else, whatever capacity he was to her. And he became the owner of everything when she passed away. And, you know, he had been giving his wife the the recipe to make the hair grease. It was, that's just like me having my formulas. And I have my products that's in the store. But I got a big ugly bowl of lotion that I use for me, you know, so the the grease wasn't in the jars. It was just, you know, a container or something, but it was the ingredients. And it was passed on. That was just it. That was just the grease. That was just the stuff we knew to use. And those are the main ingredients now in my scalp balm and the oils. And, you know, with through science and chemistry, you know, I've improved on the formula to, you know, take out stuff like, you know, because they was using some heavy grease and petroleum and, you know, and all that stuff right there. And I was able to make it lighter. And, and those who've used, you know, the hair grease can testify to how light it is and, and how effective it is, you know, and how moisturizing and, and everything, you know. And I didn't have to go to college to get a chemistry degree to learn that, you know, uh, technology, you know, audio books, all that. For the first time, my jumping ADD all over the place spirit had to sit down somewhere and, and learn, learn about my herbs and stuff, mixing these teas. Like I said, it's cool to have a, a anointing, but you can't write anointing on no label. You can't Right anointing when you have to get your patents and your trademarks for your products. You have to know your stuff. Because you, you have people that trust you to give you the right herb to heal them. And you can't just be throwing stuff together because it's cute. You have to know your stuff. It's a lot of herbs I see people use. It's popular, this, that, and other. Some stuff I don't use because I research deeper. Yeah, it's effective. Yeah, it'll make you lose weight, but it's tearing your stomach up. It's stuff like that. Yeah, it, it it's effective. It does the job, but it's doing nothing for your organs. I researched deeper because I didn't want to just make, man, I don't care about the money. I need the money to keep the, the business going. But when I look at my bank statements, I look at, how much I look like I should have made, but it goes right back into the business. And I realize I'm learning what it truly means to be a business person, you know. But my heart is so big, you know. But God always makes a way for me to be able to give and keep giving. And I never run out. My all never run out. I'm in the midst of opening the store in Redbird Mall. Walk through the entrance and you'll walk right into it. I ain't got the best of credit. But I had favor. Because when it was time to pay for what I need to pay for, God told me to give. God told me, have a sale. <laughs> and I did it. Because I've learned that no matter how crazy it sounds, it's always a method to the madness. And I trust God fully. I've been trusting him since I learned who he truly was to me. Since, he, since God stopped being some entity in the sky that's watching me through video surveillance. When I realized God was here and I'm just his avatar, I started changing my walk a little better. It started really focusing on healing people, following my intuition about people. My phone stay in my hand. And if I'm not working, I'm most likely on Facebook. 
And while I'm scrolling on Facebook, I'm praying. Sometime God will have me to inbox somebody. Say, hey, I got some tea for you. Hey, I got some salve for you. Hey, I got some lotion for you. I, I don't ask them for anything. Because if God give me the gift to make it, and I have the overflowing supply to do it, it's nothing for me to do his will. He, God makes it so easy for me to do his will. Because I can be a healer. I can be genuine. I can walk in truth. I can be a light. Even when mine is dim. I can still project whatever I have into mine build up. I can do that. And I think that's all God requires of me. Because everything else will fall into place. I had to step outside of myself. I put a, I posted a meme that it's hard to listen to what God has to say when you already have in your head, with, in your mind, what you want him to say. You know. And I had to change my whole prayer posture. Man, I was trying to get to Hollywood. I know I keep saying this, but I ain't saying it with regret. I'm saying it with amazement and how my life really just changed. And I'm super cool with where it's going because I didn't want to be fake no more. I got tired of being an actor. Miss Cotton was a character. Miss Cotton was a character that I created to overcome the social awkwardness of having autism. Miss Cotton could do anything. Miss Cotton funny. Miss Cotton engaged. Miss Cotton can dance. Miss Cotton this, this, this. But Yolanda, just like to sit on the porch, Tam, and listen to the song of these birds. You're meeting Yolanda here. This is Yolanda. Cotton left the building because Cotton wasn't needed anymore. I don't know. I don't know. See, scientists only, they can only get a research from their level of understanding. And I don't know how many scientists are actually autistic or have autism or whatever. But for one thing, autism is not a um, disability. We're just tuned in differently into this world. And we get mistaken. Some, I mean, I'm, I'm. I would say I'm on the range of having Asperger's if, if I could classify the type of autism that I have. And I excel mightily in certain areas of my life. I can literally sit in front of you and create a logo for your business in five minutes. But filling out forms, paperwork, Answering a lot of questions, mathematics, it stumps me. It turns my brain into a t tornado on the inside. But if you ask me how to create this, that, and the other, and make a, it's bling, 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 But it's nothing wrong with that. I just learned to tune into that and focus on that gift. And with the, see, I went through most of my life not knowing that it was autism, that I was autistic. My mama had been saying it in my face for quite a while because she always tell my customers the story. Even though she autistic, she still was able to do that. And I'm saying in my mind, what's wrong with being an artist? Why do you keep saying even though I'm artistic? What's wrong with being artistic? That's why you said artistic or Autistic. And she was like, which one do you think I'm saying? Look around this room. Look at all this rainbow stuff on these walls and stuff. You think normal people 
do all this. And then I, I understood myself. I was so glad I finally had that because she had said it a few times and I, and I finally asked her what was she saying and it made so much sense about why I was so attracted to colors and rainbows and the type of stimulation that I like you know clicking and popping on stuff and it all made sense and instead of feeling like something was wrong with me I said I, I got superpowers <laughs> Dang, I'm autistic. A W E Tistic. I'm special than the mother. My mama says she prayed for a special child. And I used to hate for her to tell that story when she tell people because my mama wanted me so bad. Oh my gosh, she rubbed her stomach and prayed and rubbed her stomach every day and prayed for a girl. She wanted her a girl. She wanted her a beautiful, special girl. And I'm like, Mama. You almost prayed me retarded. <laughs> Baby, I was expected. I was made in love at that. I don't know what happened between my mom and my dad later on, but I was created in love and expectancy. And, and I'm the product of that. But I didn't realize it until... damn near 50 but baby when I started loving myself for who I was and what I was and not being afraid to say hey they said I had autism and you know at first I was like well I ain't gonna claim that I ain't gonna say it or whatever they, I, but I, they said I have it because they don't understand me I am gifted I'm a superhero in my uh, grandbaby's words because let him tell it, I'm the girl from Black Panther. And we don't let him think that to otherwise, whatever, because you don't know. I might be from I might be from where they from. You don't know. Here go, here go the map right here. This the map to Wakanda right here. No, seriously. I'm super something, supernatural something. In all my life, I've been trying to get people to understand me, to understand where I'm coming from. And, you know, I've been mistaken so many times be because of my bluntness, because of the, I wouldn't say the social awkwardness, but not wanting to play the, play the game of, you know, playing these social games, you know, placating people and stroking their egos first with, so they'll be comfortable being around you never telling them about themselves because of the awkward silences and stuff and you know and and I didn't want to have to be that way and the more time I had to be away from people baby the best gift I ever had was in 2020 when I was able to Finally put that comb down and them curling irons down. I had been going for 25 years straight. No vacation. When I took a vacation from the shop, it was to go travel to do comedy. That was my vacation, to go do something else. When I couldn't do anything, I had time to reflect over my life. And I said, Sister Girl, look where the years have gone. You need to quit running from your calling quit complaining about what's not in your community get over your fear of dealing with people stop hiding behind cotton <laughs> and do what I ask you to do because I've been trying to heal people remotely for years through comedy Heal them through her. I be doing their hair and sneak a little prophecy in here and there while I'm scratching grease in their scalp or whatever, you know. Sneak a little preaching in at the end of my comedy shows and all that. And God saying, nah, nah, baby girl, I see what you're trying to do, but mm -mm, I need some more. And this is the year of more. That's what you're seeing. You're seeing the result of me giving more of myself. Not necessarily telling more of my business 
but being so freaking transparent that you can almost see through me. <laughs> Because I've spent most of my life being somebody else and creating a character for y'all on this Facebook. You know, that, that's why I be so funny when people who know me by cotton, that's who I know who know me. Because if you just know cotton, you don't know me at all. You know a whole character that I created. But if you know Yolanda, if you know Tiki, you know me. And I ran from Yolanda for a long time. I, I have no idea what happened to me in my life to make me not love my name or like my name. But I've always wanted to be everybody except for Yolanda. I did not like my name. I ain't like a lot of stuff about myself. I ain't like my nose. But I didn't know anything was wrong with my nose until I got around other kids. Because, hell, everybody in my family got big noses, whether they mixed or not. Everybody knows it was this wide. So, I, you know, nobody said nothing about noses. We scold about everything else but our noses because, hell, we all had the same nose. It was until I got in the face of cruelty of children, you know, where they, baby, if you ever seen me do comedy, if you ever see me in a roast battle and, and you want to know where I get that cutting sarcastic wit from that make people not want to go up against me, it's from being scolded on so tough in my neighborhood from being the, the ooh, we was the, the Poe family. We was, I don't even want to get into that because that's the past because now we the rich spirit family. The money don't mean nothing. Material stuff don't mean nothing. We the family that's got it and still in our right minds. We all living. We ain't wealthy money wise, baby. We wealthy spiritually wise. We wealthy health wise. And we all here. The Poe family. The last shall be first. The first shall be last. Got the best news in the world yesterday. I can't tell y'all yet because I'm going to let that person announce their stuff or whatever. But, yeah, I'm I'm going to talk my stuff when as soon as they start talking their stuff, you know. But uh, this our season. This the year of the underdog. That's why I love my, my, uh, my uh, I don't know what to call them. They so much younger than me. They my friends, but, you know, I'm like auntie to them. But, you know, they the one, they clothesline. I'll be wearing uh, audacious. And I love their motto, you know, it, it, they, I mean, sometimes you have to have the audacity. And all my life, I've had the audacity to do whatever my mind conceived that I wanted to do. And now I have the audacity to do whatever God whispers in my ear to do. And so far, I'm, I'm loving the journey. Have I always had great days? Nope. But some of them was brought brought on by myself in my own mind and trying to overthink stuff and trying to get ahead of God and trying to figure this and figure that and, until I had to stop that. I stopped trying to... My grand opening was supposed to be today. And when I tell you these past few weeks have been so stressful and so I, I ain't been sleeping. I ain't <laughs> I haven't slept. I'm I'm on the porch this early because I I, I haven't slept and I, I just was sitting on the porch. But when I pushed the date back to June nineteenth, that took a lot of the stress off of me because I saw that it wasn't finna happen and I'm not finna present no halfway stuff you know I want my stuff to be right when I present it so I pushed it back to June 19th to give myself some time but I really wanted to, to do it today in honor of D'Ambra my business partner because today is her sister's birthday her late sister Lily was also my son Marco's friend. He had a picture with her. They they went to the little
crumb and they was matching so they took a picture together and you know when we was contemplating on this space you know we was looking around and she happened to look at the store right next to it and it said diamond time 1991 and that was the birth year of her sister and she said well i got my confirmation and i said that'll be so cool if we could do it on may the first and she said I don't, well, I didn't say it was her birthday. I said it'd be cool. We could do it May 1st. Fresh start, you know, May. She said, that's my sister's birthday. I said, that's when we're going to do it. That's when we're going to do the grand opening. But, you know, uh, this is my first time trying to open a restaurant. Baby, you know, uh, during COVID time, getting, you know, certificates and this and that, and it takes a little longer. So it, it's not a quick process how, you know, how fast it used to be in the past so i miscalculated some stuff but like i said june 19th is definitely happening because baby when i tell you god have put some angels in my life who knew just how much i had in my oil reserve and just when that oil started running out i'm finna go because I'm tired of crying on my lives. But if you watching. And you donated anything. Toward my vision. Even by buying something in the store. Thank you. Because I'm feeling like Noah. And even if nobody else believed in my vision. Me and D'Amber did. And we building an ark in the middle of the mall. Because we about to save y'all. No, Tam, I can't crack my nose. Get bigger when I cry and it start flaring like a butterfly. Start doing this when I... <laughs> I'm not for the cry. <laughs> And yeah, I'm not begging, but I don't know how else to say it. If you got an extra five dollars or whatever, and if you want to cash app it to Yo Justice Seven Seven to my cash app, I'll appreciate it. It would really be appreciated. And it really, I'm so independent, y'all, because I've been let down so much in my life. It's hard to have somebody thinking I need somebody. But I thank y'all. You know, finna go. Y'all see my eyes glowing. <laughs> These ain't no sad tears, though. My eyes glow when I'm very happy. And I'm scared and excited about where God is taking me, where God is taking us. I feel the strength of all my ancestors pushing me forward. And that's why I know I'm not going to fail. And even when I start rocking and wavering, I never faint. Because I got a whole bunch of spirits. I got a whole bunch of those before me rooting for me. I got people in front of me rooting for me. And even the people that's rooting against me, I'm using that to push my sails. It's all working. For his good. And I have no problem. Doing God's will. Y'all just keep me. Y'all pray. Y'all pray for my strength. Y'all pray for my memory. Y'all pray for my ability. To remain humble. Because baby. This is the first store. 
Oh, Demetria. Baby, let me tell y'all something. I'm I'm finna tell y'all about Miss Demetria Townsend and Miss Tam. And I'm finna get off of here. Lord knows I don't like I'm not gonna say it no more. Lord knows I didn't like people. And I especially didn't like mushy, girly people trying to love on me and buy me things and be just randomly praying for me and prophesying on me and all that stuff right there. And these two women, baby, I ain't have no choice but to take that wall down. <laughs> Tam, is happening. What you spoke of me in that parking lot because y'all... uh. I was pointing at another building telling Tam what I was going to do. And Tam said, uh-uh. God finna do something else. He finna do bigger, sis. He finna. I said, but you see how big this is in here? Look in here. It's big. I... She was like, no, nah, sis. God finna do bigger. Here go Demetria. Said the same thing. And she said, guess what? Cotton ball gonna be right next to you, working with you. This be before I even said anything about the ice cream, the cotton balls ice cream. <laughs> Demetria, I met Demetria when I was seventeen years old. I had been in honors classes and tag classes since the sixth grade. When I got pregnant at the age of 16, they made me go to health special. Because back then it was frowned upon for girls to be pregnant in school. So I had to go to health special. Demetria was pregnant at the same time. Y'all, I hadn't even seen Demetria since we was at that school and she had the same kindness when I saw her again she had way back then I was scared pregnant at that school both of us her little sweet kind little goofy nature mother in nature and God sent her back into my life when I was trying to put that lab together I was trying to get people to come help me pack stuff but i didn't want no it, it, it's certain spirits i couldn't take around me i couldn't take envious spirits around me i couldn't take ulterior motive spirits around me but demetria came and she stayed and she would not let me pay her or compensate her every day since my lab been open demetria have been coming up there helping me pack my stuff get my orders together whatever i need she's there even putting people orders together and sometimes i've been so low i would just drive myself to the lab and i would sit there and wait till six o'clock when demetria walked in and it was something about her spirit that made me spring up and start making stuff and packaging stuff. And and one day I realized, I said, oh my God, I let somebody in. I've let some new people in my life. You know, they used to say no new friends. I got all new friends. You know, BJ's still around because that's my sister. <laughs> but everybody else, like village, village, like around me, accountability sisters. I got a whole new tribe of women around me. And their spirits are so pure toward me that it pushes me and propels me if the glow you see on me is the reflection of sisters who instinctively knew that I needed that there go another one Renee 
Renee, what you spoke is coming to pass. I love you too, Demetria. Then Candy. <laughs> oh, Lord, boy. Oh, my angel. Then Tisha sent her kids in there to help me. Amber sent her little cousins in there. It's just like... And I know she don't like no recognition or nothing, but I'm just going to say it today. I'm already crying and snot and stuff on the porch. I'm just going to get it on out while I'm here. My friend, Leonda. I ain't going to say what you did, girl. Because I know you. Oh, you remind me so much of Miss Paula like that. I went there put you out there like that because I know God moves you to do what you do and you don't want no recognition for it but sister girl if you stumble across this video your randomness have pulled me out of so many situations and you know what I'm talking about there go another one Ella May what you spoke It's coming to pass. And what I talked to you about on that sidewalk in my apartment, I'm doing it because it's time. And I know it's time. And I've been avoiding it, but it's time. And I'm doing it, sister. Y'all, I'm finna go so y'all can run this back because I wasn't crying this whole video. Give y'all the opportunity to see me talking without. See how big my nose done got. Hey, this was cleansing. I needed this. Y'all have a groovy day. I love y'all on purpose. Bye.